Well, good evening, everyone, uh, ladies and gentlemen, people watching at home. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Gross Hill Township Board of Trustees. Uh, business meeting, June 24th, 2013. Call the meeting to order at 7.33. Let's begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Uh, we have everyone present this evening. To begin with... Uh, Additions or deletions to the agenda? And Mr. Posey asks. Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to add an action item to authorize uh, signatures and uh, submission of the PAC document that we discussed at the last meeting. Can we That's have a promoting active communities document. Okay, we have the, the motion and supported by uh, Clerk Ranka. You give us a little background. Any discussion among the board on the promoting active communities submission? The Submission was substantially completed, as you know, and uh, copies were distributed at the last township board meeting for every township board member to review and come back with ordinance, uh, to, not ordinances, but uh, revisions, if necessary, to Alan Veliquette and, uh, and or Brian Pollock. I'm asking that uh, those submissions be done within the next day or two and you make your submissions by July 1 to Alan and uh, let him have a day or two to look at them, have Dale, okay, our, our business township manager. Yep. Let's, let's, let's cover this more if we decide, this is uh, history on it, let's discuss this more if uh, the board decides to add it to the agenda. Okay. So, any other questions regarding making this addition? All right, with that offer, those in favor of adding action item eight, the uh, promoting active community submission, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered. We will add that as, or we intend to add that as action item eight. And at this time, I am also going to request the board uh, remove the adoption of the 2012 International Property Maintenance Code action item. It would be action item six. Support. Okay, seconded by uh, Treasurer Van Oss. Um, the more I learn about it, the less I know, and we're not ready to adopt this uh, in relation with uh, our existing our existing codes. So we will be just. Discussing this further, but those, any questions, discussion among the board? All right, with none offered, those in favor of removing action item six, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed? None offered. So let's, we'll delete that from the agenda. Other additions, deletions to the agenda? All right, with none offered, those in favor of approving the agenda as amended, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The uh, agenda stands amended. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce Mrs. Pam Frucci with her presentation. And uh, I know how unfamiliar as you are with public speaking, Pam, I'm sure you'll do a fine job. Welcome back. Mm, I'm Pam Frucci, <coughs> 24531. And I don't think your mic is working. Yeah, it's not working. Let's see if you can clear it. Try, try it now. What I'm here for is to uh, present a what I think is a very attractive plate. Uh, Jack, my husband Jack, and I attended the Beautification Council of Southeastern Michigan. They've been around. They just celebrated their 50th anniversary. Keep Michigan Beautiful. This is District One of Keep Michigan Beautiful, and. Um, Beautification Council of Southeastern Michigan started in uh, 1963, and their purpose is to motivate and assist all municipalities in our area to develop anti-litter recycling and beautification programs. We discuss, suggest new ideas, and coordinate projects to strengthen the overall effort of civic improvement in the entire state. Our goal is to make every community cleaner, healthier, a more beautiful place in which to live, work, and play. And in doing so, we develop civic pride with citizen responsibility and support. Art Kester, I see out working in the Memorial Garden as we speak, uh, has been president of the Beautification Council of Southeastern Michigan and also Keep Michigan Beautiful. 
This was presented at their 50th anniversary dinner party up at Plum Grove um, Golf Course. And uh, I wanted to bring it back and hopefully display it in a place at the board uh, in the Township Hall here. And there's also a nice commemorative booklet that went with it. So if I could leave it in your hands or... I would be honored, but we can leave it with Dale. Okay. There's a box and I'll give you the box. Mm -hmm. We will find a place of prominence to display that. Now, uh, I just wanted to add one other item. Back in 1974, I stayed home. Um, Jay Frucci was just a little guy. And I stayed home from teaching, and I noticed there was an awful lot of trash and litter and bottles and cans all up and down the streets of Roseau. I sat down with Dewey Henry back in 1974, and I said, uh, could the township do something about cleaning up the trash along our road? He said, why don't you do something about it? So that's when um, I, we got going and we founded the Island Beautification Committee. And we've been going for how many years now? Since 74. Uh, back then, we used to do litter count. Now the streets are so much cleaner. And uh, back then, I remember in 1978, before the bottle bill went into effect, we counted 4,000 bottles and cans up and down just Meridian Road. So we're, we're living in a much cleaner uh, community now. Uh, and just another sidelight, I put a, a note on each of your desks when you have a ch it's only a one pager. When you have a chance to read through it, I did give a presentation on a community sideboard, and I was hoping that there could be a follow up and we could find the money someplace. But this just gives you a little more background on it, and attached to it, some of the wonderful areas we have on the island. We had 163 people sitting on the lawn of the Commons area Sunday. And this is a, a flyer that has all 10 concerts listed. So if you haven't attended one yet, they're going to be every Sunday from 7 to 8. And uh, there had been a complaint or two <laughs> about the planner as you come onto the island off of West Jefferson and Parkway. The good news is Bert Urbani, who just got Green Leader Award, and I wasn't there, but I heard she was the only one in the room that got a standing ovation, and she lives right here on Grosse Hill. And uh, she's the one that started the Green Team. Tomorrow, uh, Thursday at noon, the Green Team from the DTE Energy Plant right here, we're going to meet at noon and we're going over to the planter that seems to be sprouting a lot of weeds and we're going to weed it and plant flowers there so that will be even a nicer uh, first impression of Grosseal. You're still off island but the sign points to Grosseal and the planter will be weeded and planted so uh, that will be another improvement that we can enjoy. You know if I can interject the problem with that area on the north east corner of uh, uh, Grosseal Parkway in Jefferson is not too many people remember what a mess it used to be it's <laughs> it's so so much better it's groomed it's uh, it, it's you know it's a controlled growth area we have flowers and trees there and you have to think or the ones who pushed it, so.
We'll move into uh, consent agenda. Approval of the check register dated 2000, June 20th, 2013, and fireworks permit approval, BASF fireworks display, June 28, 2013, rain date will be June 29th. Support. Okay, uh, moved by Treasurer Van Oss, supported by uh, Trustee Smith. Any questions, comments among the board? None offered those in favor of approving the consent agenda as published. Please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered. The consent agenda stands approved. On to action items. Mr. Supervisor. Mr. Clerk. I authorize to, uh, I would move to authorize the purchase of seven 10.1 inch display Samsung Galaxy tablet computers containing 16 gigabytes of storage, one gigabyte of RAM, Wi-Fi capability, including carry case and installation setup and configuration in the mount of five thousand three hundred and seventy six dollars all inclusive from the clerk's budget line item one zero one zero dash two one five dash nine eight six dot zero 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 okay we have a motion support and seconded by treasurer van Oost. background uh, background on this this is the uh, the move to go paperless packets uh, we talked about this a few few uh, meetings ago and basically, if you look at the amount of packets that we get, there are seven for the board members, several for the staff members, and some go out to the local media. Uh, each of them contains typically about a pound of paper, um, various color copies and non-color copies. So in a, in a, move, in a move to go uh, in, in a little more economical fashion and a little less, uh, a little more ecological footprint, footprint fashion, we'd like to move to uh, paperless packets. So the board would have um, basically a tablet computer that we bring to the meetings and can take with us wherever we need to. Um, in addition to the paperless packets, it also en enables um, much easier FOIA requests from the computers. Uh, if township, uh, um, uh, township officials uh, leave office for whatever reason or uh, we need to secure information from the computer, they can just bring their tablet in and uh, any information can be downloaded as required. So it's really like a protection for, uh, for the township as well from an electronics rec record management standpoint as well. Um, I will say that uh, the, the clerk's office, particularly uh, uh, Deputy Clerk Sharon Gray, researched uh, pricing on these tablets and actually used, uh, there's a state of Michigan website called uh, My Deal, MI for Michigan Deal, uh, and it was actually more expensive than, uh, than our computer consultant to purchase from, so you know, we do believe this is the lowest price for these uh, for these tablets. Well, I'll just chime in. I, I'm I love to see us moving in this direction because this is one of our smaller uh, board packets. Sometimes, and of course, I bring more paper than I probably need to. But the idea of having it preserved electronically, I can move it around to people, I can store it, share it, take it with me wonderful idea and I'm glad you went with the uh, program you did uh, I already spoke of Samsung good products um, Android body um, I'm looking for I'm looking forward to it we'd like to add one other thing and that's at the uh, the, the, the the master um, of the uh, of this idea is uh, Ted Fournier so it's his uh, his brainchild early uh, early on in the uh, in the uh, right after the election, he came to me and with the idea, and I thought it was an excellent idea. So I'd like to thank Ted for uh, for coming up with the idea. Well, thanks, Ted. Um, assuming it passes. <laughs> Other comments from the board? We're looking forward to this brave new world. Very much so. All right. <laughs> uh, Bring it on. Okay. Well, then <laughs> with with. <laughs> With, with that uh, level of support, uh, those in favor of authorizing the purchase of seven 10.1 inch display Samsung Gal Galaxy tablet computers um, in the total cost of $5,376, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered. Under the brave new world. Thank you. All right. Action item number two, Mr. Posias. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. This action item is. Uh, the subject is to approve to bid bike path repairs uh, to authorize the township engineer to prepare and seek bids for bike path repairs in accordance with the CE Rains Grozio bike path repairs report GI 578 
as confirmed by the June 10, 2013 Bike Path Advisory Commission update report. Okay, we have, uh, that was my question. Is it uh, Mr. Budney? Yes. Okay, seconded by Mr. Budney. Your uh, background, Mr. Posask? This, this repair project has been proposed by the BPAC and discussed at our last township board meeting. Uh, the current budget identifies several items, uh, seal coating for $10,000, blacktop replacement for $100,000, signs, replacement, and path markings, $3,000 as budget as expenditures. The report GI 578 estimates the repairs to cost approximately $164,450 in addition to the designated items in the budget. There are funds available under reserve for future maintenance in the amount of approximately $200,000. All of these funds are specific bike path maintenance funds from the voter approved millage. Cost of bidding this project is estimated to cost around $3,000. In October 2011, the Township Board last approved repair, repairs to this system in the amount of $45,000. That work was completed in spring of 2012 for 42 745-71. If approved by Township Board authorization, uh, we anticipate bids will come in within 30 days from approval. Award is scheduled for the August 12th board meeting. This timeline may seem aggressive. However, this will expedite the repairs so they will occur this season. All of our bike paths should be top notch come fall. That's all I have, Mr. Supervisor. Okay, well, you've, you've kept us up to speed. Other comments, questions from the board uh, regarding this repair project? Is there anybody who doesn't think that the especially now in the summer, those paths are well used and it's, it's certainly our duty to maintain them because uh, the residents love them. It really makes our community a, a singular place. So, any other comments? Otherwise, those in favor of uh, authorizing the Township Engineer to prepare and seek bids for bike path repairs based on the report GI-578 and confirmed in the June 10th uh, bike Path Advisory Commission update report. Please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered. Good work to the committee and Mr. Posiask. Thank you. Uh, moving on to action item number three. Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. I'll take that one. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve the purchase of a new tech TriCaster broadcast system for the low bidder advanced lighting and sound of Troy, Michigan for $21,103.54 as recommended by the Communications Commission at the last meeting that took place on June 12, 2013. Support. Okay, moved by uh, Trustee Smith and seconded by Trustee uh, Budney. Um, as you know, we've been experiencing some technical difficulties over the last couple of months. Um, this system is going to replace the Global Caster system that's been in use since 1998. Um, it is presently not working. Uh, this purchase was approved in the 2013 and 2014 uh, Groziel Township budget. Um, two bids were received and actually I'd like to invite Ted Fournier up to the mic so that he can give us a little bit more of a broader sense of what this piece of equipment does because it's uh, rather technical. <laughs> uh, good, good evening. Basically it's a mixer for the audio and video in, in productions. Um, like you said, the original piece of equipment that we installed is not, not working and not fixable. So um, a little history on this. Over the last couple of years, we've talked about upgrading all our technology. Um, this year, in front of the board, when we budgeted, um, we put in $70,000 for a three-step upgrade, and this is step one. Uh, the money basically budgeted is, co is coming from cable franchise fees that we normally don't spend and give back to the general fund. But this year the board um, agreed with the cable commission and it allowed us to spend a, a one time $70,000 to do it. The, the real, the real um, advantage of going to this besides the fact that ours isn't working right now is that it's, it's going to offer the capability of going stepping into the world of high definition and also streaming and we're going to be able to do all kinds of little fancy things that the younger generation is doing now and streaming and putting things in M MPEG and stuff like that so 
Um, uh, we went with the low bidder. Uh, as we discussed at the Cable Commission meeting, I am very comfortable with the high bidder, but uh, uh, we budgeted about 25000 for this, and, and Advanced Lighting at Troy came in at twenty one one. I've made a lot of contacts with them over the last six weeks, setting up a relationship with them, and I'm very comfortable with them. I included in your packet a list of uh, projects that they have done. They have included all their employees and their employee backgrounds, and uh, and actually the highest compliment came from the high bidder itself. But you know, it told me when they heard that uh, Thaler heard that they were bidding, he just said they're they're hard to beat and they're a good company. So that was, uh, you know, when your competition praises you, you can feel comfortable. So yeah. Any questions? No, thanks. I also just want to point out that Birmingham Public Schools utilizes this organization as well as the Greater West Bloomfield Cable Communications Commission, the City of Auburn Hills, and our neighboring city of Woodhaven. Um, uh, it, within the document, there's also information in regards to training. There's going to be two full days of training that's going to be available to TED. The warranty is significant, so we won't have to worry about, you know, catastrophic failure with any of that anytime soon. So. Well, we researched this piece of equipment. I had a demonstration in this room of this piece of equipment about six years ago. And I thought so highly of it that I recommended it to the school board, and they actually purchased it two years ago. And so some of my technicians have been using this piece of equipment already at the school board. I mean, it's an earlier model, but uh, it, it hasn't had any problems or any repairs or any hiccups over there at the school board. So I, I feel confident that uh, it'll, it'll perform well here. Great. Thanks, Ted. Anybody have questions? I just have one question. Uh, this first phase came in about where you had it budgeted? Uh, uh, well, a couple thousand less. And the reason it's on the agenda tonight is if we don't purchase it this week, Thursday, it goes up $2,300. On both sides, on both bids, it would go up $2,300. Kind of a blue light special? I think we're going to be a blue light special. <laughs> so uh, it's under what we anticipated. So the first piece has come in a little lower. What comforted me was both those bids were look very specific and they were very close when we see bids and some of our other bids here are so wild all over the page these are very close both these companies did their homework they sharpened their pencils and it looks like you got us the best out there hopefully so I'm not I'm not nervous when I see bids that are that close and that well machined so any other comments You're gonna keep us in the 21st century oh, I'm gonna get at least 20 you know 2015 <laughs> no bet, no bets after that. All right. Any other uh, comments, questions from the board? All right, with none offered. Those in favor of uh, approving the purchase of a new tech TriCaster broadcast system from Advanced Lighting and Sound of Troy for uh, twenty-one thousand one hundred three dollars and fifty-four cents, please signify by saying aye. All right. Aye. aye. Opposed. Not offered. May I make one just one comment uh, on a previous item? Uh, these board packets that you're going to be available to you. I just want the community to know that uh, with the help of the clerk's department, we try very hard to get them posted on the web page. All, like I think this time it's 100 pages, 100 pages PDF. We try to get them posted by 5 o'clock on Friday so the citizens have all the weekend to peruse them if they want to. So it's not, you guys aren't the only ones that, you know, have the availability, but the whole Whole Island has the ability to read the, uh, the PDF form or the board package on Friday, whenever technology allows us. Thanks, Ted. Thanks, Ted. Uh, let's see, moving along. Action item number four, Mr. Malvesto. It is a recommendation of the Fire and Police Commissions and the Fire and Police Chiefs, the, excuse me, that the bid be awarded to Baird and Lawler for a sum of $33,763 for the repair and repaint of the carports and trench drains at the Public Safety Building. Support. Please moved by uh, Trustee uh, Malvesto and seconded by Treasurer Van Oss. Uh, give, give us some background, please. A little bit of history. The carports and the trench drains are 23 years old. Presently, both items are in need of repair. In fact, the, uh, the carports uh, have been taken out of service. They're in such bad shape. Uh, they need to be repaired, and, and they also need to be repainted. The carport stanchions are rusted and are no longer supporting the structure properly. We have not allowed the use of the carports uh, until necessary repairs are made. 
The French drains are an important part of the concrete floors. They, need, they are rusted and need to be sandblasted and, and, uh, and coatings. The grating is also rusted and needs to be repainted or replaced or repainted. Some of the grating is no longer bearing this weight. If there's any further... Well, that explains why, if anybody still asks, why the, you see all the police cars parked in the parking lot and not under the carports because it's not safe to park them under the carports. So this, this needs to be fixed. Correct. Questions, comments from the board? This is another one of those examples where the, the bids came out significantly uh, different one to the other and uh, Baron Lawler came in, looks like a good price. Significant, I mean, it's less than half of one of them. Correct. So, plus we know where Mr. Lawler lives. So, uh, <laughs> questions, comments? <laughs> questions, comments from the board? Let's get it fixed. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Not off. Let's get it fixed. Mr. Malvesto, one more, please. Opposed motion. It is, re it is a recommendation of the Fire and Police Commissions and the Fire and Police Chiefs that a bid be awarded to Baird and Lawler for a sum of $10,950 for the repair and coating of the PSB, the Public Safety Building, gutters. Support. Uh, let's see, who you give that one? Who is? Okay, we'll give that the support. Moved by uh, Trustee Malvesto and supported. Seconded by uh, Trustee Buddy. Uh, a little bit of history. The gutters are 23 years old. Uh, currently, the gutters are leaking and causing damage within the building. The building cannot be repaired and painted until the gutters have been repaired. And the gutters, the building's 20. Chief, do you want to elaborate? Because you've, you've briefed us on this, but. Yeah, the, the front of the building is starting to, uh, the, dri the uh, drive it or the stucco looking part of the building is starting to uh, show some damage from our leaky gutters. I can't repair that and paint the building till I get the gutters fixed. And the gutters are kind of an oddball design. Um, they're a galvanized gutter inside a decorative uh, uh, galvanized painted gutter. Mm -hmm. And that gutter is flashed 18 inches up under that standing seam roof. So there's one or two ways to fix it. Either coat it and get some time out of it or completely lift the edge of that roof up and pull those gutters out and then replace it. And that cost was up in the close to forty, fifty thousand dollar mark. So I opted to go with this coating process and from what I've read seems to be uh, mm -hmm. very workable. But they are doing some major repair in the current gut uh, gutter. There's, I don't forget what there's in there, two or four hundred feet, where they actually got to go in and repair the galvanized gutter where it's gone. It's completely gone. <coughs> so as soon as this is repaired, we're going to put an RFQ out for repair and repaint of the public safety building and this money is coming out of uh, cell tower which is makes about 80 percent of the repairs of the Grosiola uh, public safety building so very little tax dollars goes into this repair work well you've had the building for a long time you keep it in good shape and it, it costs money to keep it in good shape um, got a question mr. mr. treasurer hey, not yeah not so fast you uh, explain the alternate painting what is what is yeah we were going to go ahead and have the uh, I, I don't know if you remember about I don't know what is about 10 or 12 years ago we had the standing seam roof repainted and it was a three-way repair with warranties and all that kind of stuff because it started to uh, show some uh, I don't want to call it rusting but corrosion sure. and but we never did the gutters as far as I'm concerned we put the uh, rains wanted to put a quote in there for painting the gutters after they repair them, the outside of them, and I chose not to do that. We're just going to power wash them and give them a coat of wax and make them look pretty. So there's nothing wrong with the, the gutters as they stand right now. And, and that's included in the 10-9? The, the cleaning part of it? No, we'll do that when we do the paint job. Just the, the gutters themselves are strictly the repair itself. So this painting was just for the gutters? The $2,000 bid and the $12,000 bid, that yeah. was strictly for painting that had nothing to do with the gutter repair Paint, painting of just the gutters or the gutters and downspots that was it ten thousand dollars twelve thousand dollars about put me on the ground so I chose to <clears throat> back off on that and just give it a good power washing and clean it up so they don't leak they're fine so I thought Picasso was dead <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Other, are we going to let the chief sit down any more questions for him all right, uh, any other comments from the board? 
All right, with none offered, those in favor of uh, awarding the bid to Baird Lawler for the sum of $10,950 for repair and coating of the public safety building gutters, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered? Again, Chief, keep the building looking good. Um, six is gone. I'm going to introduce action item number seven. I'd uh, propose that we cancel the July 8, 2013 Township Board meeting and authorize the Finance Department and Clerk's Office to process accounts payable payments and disbursements through July 12, 2013. Support. Okay, so, uh, seconded by Trustee Budney. Um, this is not uncommon to drop a July meeting and due to the July 4th holiday, reduced staffing and lack of high priority items, uh, staff has suggested canceling the July 8th meeting and authorize the payments uh, to carry us through to the uh, the following meeting. So have a little more time to work on other odds and ends. Any discussion among the board? None offered. Those in favor of canceling the July 8th meeting, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That was easy. <coughs> Mr. Pose yes. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. The uh, action item number eight has no documentation in your packets, but it is a request by me on behalf of the BPAC and uh, the, the work that was done uh, to promote active communities, a, a very extensive, I think it's an 85-page document that was tabulated over the course of the last six months using several different people uh, to gather information about our community and what its attributes are. We are at the point now where at the last meeting we asked that all township uh, trustees and uh, clerk, all everybody sitting at this table, take a look at the package and uh, send your comments in. I would hope that some of you have, and if not, would you please send in your comments about it to Alan Veliquette, who is kind of shotgunning the gathering of data to the end. And my request specifically to you is to authorize the township business manager, Dale Ream, to sign the document and submit it on July 1st. Support. Okay, moved by uh, Trustee Posey, supported by Treasurer Van Oss. And we've already got a little bit of the background, and we remember what we discussed at the last board meeting. Um, other qu questions, comments from the board? Well, with that, uh, golly, uh, those in favor of, I hate to sit here say what Wally just said, but uh, um, <laughs> submitting the, <laughs> yeah, su su submitting the uh, bike, the uh, promoting active communities, what is it? Is it a position document to the state? Uh, those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered. It's, it is a, it's a been a lot of work and my hats are off to the, the members who, who, you know, answered all the questions, did all the research, and, and are making this a reality. And that will conclude our uh, action items for this evening. Clerk's report, I'll turn it over to Clerk Ranka. Mr. Supervisor. Uh, Mr. Supervisor, the, the, uh, the, both the pleasure and the, uh, the uh, excitement of attending the Michigan Association of Municipal Clerks Annual Conference, uh, June 8th through the 20th uh, last week. Um, attending Clerking 101, uh, Elections A to Z, FOIA and Open Meetings Act, uh, Electronic Records Management, uh, and then also had some uh, some time with uh, Ruth Johnson and some, some folks with the Michigan Elections Commission. So it was a fantastic uh, conference. Uh, Deputy Clerk Gray joined me as well, um, except for the Clerking 101. She didn't need that aspect of it, uh, but for the other the other session she did join me for. It was uh, it, it was a great conference, very educational, and it was also very eye opening in listening to some of the uh, some of the discussions that were taking place there. You know, we don't, we don't have a perfect township. I don't think anybody does, but we definitely have a much more uh, perfect township than than a lot of them in the in the state, as well as even a lot of the cities. So it was very eye opening from how, how far ahead of the curve we are. Uh, overall in our township uh, in our township operations so uh, good good uh, good conference and I was uh, I was happy to attend that's it for the clerk's report okay thank you mr. Ranka mr. treasurer oh, I'm sorry uh, mr. Bundy, did you have a no okay no, no. 
Uh, <clears throat> the investment reports available in the office uh, see myself for uh, Annette for the update. Uh, my <clears throat> the tax bills will come, be coming out around the first week in July. I'm sure everybody's anxious to see those. If you're looking for uh, <clears throat> a pre-shock and need to know how much your taxes are, you can contact uh, my office and we'll certainly give you that data. Uh, dog, <clears throat> dog park passes and dog licenses are available in our department. Uh, the Airport Commerce Park Commission does not meet before our next meeting, so I'll give you details on that at our next meeting. I have nothing further. All right, thank you, Mr. Treasurer. We'll move on to trustee reports. Uh, Mr. Posey asked. Just a couple things, Mr. Supervisor. The bike path and horse mill is proceeding, perhaps a bit behind schedule, but uh, there's, a, there's a whole lot of landscape changes going on there right now, and uh, we're still very optimistic. I'm optimistic. Uh, I have a bet going we'll run on it on Labor Day, but uh, we'll see. The uh, bike path and greenway open space committees will meet jointly again. Uh, we have found a, a commonality and a, a nice chemistry between the two groups. And so at the next scheduled meeting of the bike path, it'll be a joint meeting. Uh, it's interesting, the Greenways Open Space Committee had decided to take uh, July and August off and uh, did some talk and then got them to back together <coughs> again. So a good group, good group working together, two good groups working together. That's all I have, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Bevy. Yes, thanks, Mr. Uh, Loftus. Um, DPS, uh, the next meeting is in July. Uh, but uh, tomorrow, some of the members of the commission are going down to Monroe to look at some roads that have been chip sealed. It's a, a process that we're looking into to see if we can use it on our roads and uh, help maintain them. Uh, ZBA meeting is tomorrow at 7 o'clock. And I'd just like to wish everybody a happy 4th of July since we won't see you until after that. Thank you, Mr. Bundy. Uh, Mrs. Smith. Uh, I have no report at this time. Okay. And Mr. Malvesto. Uh, <clears throat> the fire commission meeting had been uh, um, postponed and has been rescheduled for this coming Thursday. So uh, that's one thing going. Also, the recreation uh, committee, uh, that meeting had been postponed and uh, we're going to meet uh, Thursday afternoon uh, to uh, just go over all the different rec sites that uh, so we're all together and looking at the same same projects at the same time. Uh, that's all I have to report. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Malvesto. Um, oh, I guess up to me. Let's start with the easy stuff. As uh, Mr. Frucci pointed out, there will be concerts on the Commons uh, every Sunday night. Bring a lawn chair because there are none provided, but it's a great way to spend the evening and see your friends. Um, additionally, I just want to th thank the Garden Club for all the landscaping where as you drive onto the island, that median area coming off Gross Hill Parkway, uh, the work of Four Corners, working with DDA and getting the flowers along Macomb Street. I just love seeing all the flowers. It really looks good and, and well, my thanks to the garden, if you're listening, my thanks to the Garden Club. And then, uh, okay, so while we're on the subject of beautification, uh, your board, we met for an hour prior to this meeting and it's probably one of the most productive uh, brain-racking get-togethers we've had on, I just the short version is, uh, you know, blight ordinances and cl cleaning up the community. Uh, this board is united in that we realize we have left uh, ordinances unenforced, we've let some parts of the community deteriorate, and we're going to work to fix that. And I've got to start with an education program. I'm, I'm just convinced that most of the residents I'll call them offenders, but when they realize something they're doing is precluded by ordinance, I'm convinced most will find a way to abate it, clean it up, and uh, I mean, this is a beautiful community. The whole community needs to be beautiful. So we'll start an education program on what you can and can't do, the old saying, you know, what's uh, made out of fiberglass, aluminum, uh, wood or steel, and you can't park it in your driveway over the winter. It's your boat, it's your RV, it's your trailer. Those are the easy ones to fix. There's other storage issues. Um, we want to fix it up. We want to clean it up. We, uh, I'm, I'm convinced we can make it happen. 
The other uh, item was the International Property Maintenance Code. I need more time with our attorney and our, our, our code enforcement. And a building inspector to see what parts of it we like, if we don't like it. It's, it's sort of becoming the national standard. It's available online. Uh, several states have adopted it already. The uh, state of Michigan has adopted portions of it that we're required to adopt. We're debating whether we need to adopt all of it, if we want to tweak it and make it ours, if we want to adopt it and improve our ordinances. So the entire board is taking sections of our standing ordinances, reviewing them, making sure they're the ordinances we want, bring our community forward for general cleanup and just to be better run. And uh, we only want to do this once. We want to get it right the first time. It will take some time, but uh, hopefully by the end of summer, you'll see significant improvements. Uh, we did hold the open house over a year ago. It was well attended. And of the, I'm going to say, 40 people there, 39 said, please start cleaning up. And one gentleman's comment was, I don't see any problem. So preponderance of people said, yep. We have things we need to clean up. So we're going to get to work on that. Again, the board united. We kicked around a lot of ideas. It was time very well spent. I want to thank them for giving me another hour of their time and a lot of their IQ. Um, we're going to be closed 4th of July. They'll give you the hours. This That will conclude my report. I'll turn it over to the township manager, who has an interesting PowerPoint. I, I think it's interesting. I have a few brief items to report as well as this presentation. Um, the first, the paperless meeting packets. No, we will not copy them for you when you ask us to. <laughs> okay, maybe an agenda. <laughs> um, we're we're going to get through that learning curve quick. Um, and then, uh, as Mr. Supervisor stated, the um, Fourth of July holiday will be closed. That's Thursday the fourth. It will be open the rest of the following week or rest of the week. We will be open on Friday. Yes. While the uh, presentation's opening, um, I wanted to take this opportunity to give the board and the community an update on the East River Grosvenor Parkway waterfront area and uh, give you a little bit of background uh, in, in, I guess, some of, the, some of the players that are involved with this. And uh, I invited some of the somewhat unofficial mm -hmm. subcommittee people to attend tonight. And we have Ann and Tim here tonight. Jill. Feel free to join in or whatever you'd like to do. Um, but again, I just want to give an update of the past, present, and future on this uh, on this project. Uh, it started, uh, I believe, it was September of uh, 2011. Is that correct? Not long ago. <laughs> okay. I'll let you know where we are today, where we're headed in the short term future, and then throw some thanks uh, to the groups and uh, it, some individuals that have been uh, taking a very active role. But actually, this is a photo of the sunrise the morning we started the cleanup, um, and, and that, that was uh, in, in the fall, right after we received the uh, approval, of, uh, acceptance, or transfer of the property from Wayne County. And that's what it looked like that morning. And that's what it looked like uh, mid-morning. Um, a group of volunteer firemen came with their equipment and their saws and and, and did just that, hacked it into pieces parts. Um, I don't know if you, well this one you can't see, we had um, up near the green dumpster we had an excavator uh, donated by Compo Brothers that was lifting all of the debris up. Bucket at a time if you will. This was the area after the structure's been removed, and to the right of this barrel, you'll see this old concrete area. That area has since been removed, and we'll show you um, how that was addressed. Again, um, equipment donation by Compo Brothers. They um, removed, broke up all that concrete, and regraded the hill. Um, in essence, 
Oop, one more two. This slope, if you see my arrow, um, has been evened out down to approximately the barrel area. So all this area was broken up, it was unsafe, it was unstable, and, and then filled in. And again, that was the shot of, the, of that. And they literally drove that excavator down the hill and back up the hill. I've been nervous. Yeah. Um, here is the, um, the new stairways that are under construction, while they were under construction, and that's Eagle Scout Ethan Ames. Um, coordinated, fundraised the entire project. And uh, I, I, I think memory tells me correctly, he had well over 300 hours into this project. And there's a finished project from the bottom of the steps up. And that's from the top looking down. Currently, um, the hill that you saw, uh, we were able to put some grass seed and put some stabilization blankets down last fall, and the grass grew, and the whole idea was to protect it from erosion, hold everything in the place, and the uh, Nature and Land Conservancy has um, planted numerous um, native plantings to help stabilize the slope. Um, so you'll see an under construction uh, sign there. Here's an example uh, of a bush, and I'm sorry, I don't know the name of it. Pam? <laughs> <laughs> now, and in the background, you'll see some other plants by the flags and, and so forth. Um, this is the, the hill from back further, and there is a plant approximately every foot to foot and a half on that hill now. Here's a few um, redbud bushes. Uh, proper line boundary on the south end. And here's the waterfront area today. As required by ordinance, as approved by this board, um, we do have the park rules there. Um, as near as I can tell, the few times um, that I've been there where people were there, they're obviously abiding by those rules. Um, it, it seems like when I'm there, there's either no one there or when I'm there within 10, 15 minutes, uh, five or six people will come and go. Um, and it's intended to be a pedestrian and a bicycle. Um, park and I, I haven't received any parking complaints and I think by the most part that's working out but um, we just need to stay sensitive and focused on that matter. Um, obviously Neighbors Cross the Street Historical Society um, they're going to play a role as well. Um, this is an example of a historical plaque um, if you recall their presentation to the township a while back this is the type of thing that they're going to be putting around the entire uh, depot and uh, they'd like to put a, a few of them at, at the park area and that's scheduled for probably I believe according to their master schedule 2015 so that's something that's coming in the future as well. So where are we? What are our next steps? Well we said then and we we keep preaching it out loud and to ourselves keep it simple and, and, I, and I think that that shows why we've done so much in a short amount of time because we do it a little at a time. Um, we actually uh, will be placing a bike rack there um, that is ordered, and it should be receiving that. I think we're expecting delivery the end of July. Um, we've noticed a lot of bikes just, just laying there against the tree, so um, we've worked that out. Uh, the Historical Society plaques will be forthcoming. Um, there's a berm that comes across the front. We're going to reinstall that area once we uh, finalize the plantings and the mulching. Um, and again, that's being handled by the um, Conservancy. And then uh, the Nature Land Conservancy also plans to install some interpretive signs related to the plants and uh, what, uh, what type of uh, plant materials are there. So uh, thanks. Obviously volunteers. This has been a major, major, major volunteer effort. Um, the stairway. Um, very instrumental was Ethan Ames as, as the Eagle Scout project and as I mentioned that earlier and that's just a great ton 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 of things 
the Historical Society, Nature Land Conservancy, Compo Brothers. Um, the stabilization materials for the hill were donated by Moore Landscaping. And as I pointed out, the uh, fire department uh, with their equipment and their cleanup efforts and the police department attending all the events and maintaining and controlling the traffic. But uh, this has been turned over to the Recreation Commission, as this board is aware. <clears throat> and what the commission has done is broke the different um, portions of the recreation area um, into different assignments and and, and, and they end as the liaison for that for that um, actual park so um, they've been uh, doing a great job staying active in all these different projects and programs in the community and uh, obviously a thanks to the board um, and those we missed because I'm sure we did so um, with that if there's anyone else has questions or they'd like to mention someone that I forgot but I wanted to <coughs> highlight it and, and let everyone know that it's, that it is proceeding uh, very well, and I, I guess I should say according as planned. <laughs> but um, again, little at a time. I've heard I've heard nothing but compliments, and people will stop me at dinner and just wanted to tell you I went down to the beach, and it's just beautiful. It's uh, it's a real asset to the community, and looking forward to getting a bike rack there and ride my bike over again. Great, thank you. Anyone else? Does anyone care to add anything? Ann, Tim? Um, I, I stopped there yes, yes, yesterday myself and because uh, I saw three or four cars there and I thought, oh, they're never room just to fit in. And uh, whoever was there, it was just their vehicles, but I looked at the plannings and mm -hmm. beautiful. It's beautiful. Any time of day that you're there, it's pretty. It's, it's, it's just a pretty piece of real yes. estate. Does it have a name yet? It is the Grosio Parkway East River Road Waterfront Area by ordinance, and no, it does not have a formal name. <laughs> we, we, may, we may bid out the naming rights, you know, to, we could fund maybe a major improvement. Pepsi <laughs> 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 Park. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Did you yes. add sand to it? No, we did not. The question was, do we add sand to the property? And the answer is no. No, but just, there a is, just a natural beach. Yeah, it's a nice beach area. Yeah. One, of the, one of the very few pieces of natural beach left on the island. Mm -hmm. So yeah. just a pretty place. And, and, and the things that they've done as volunteers and Supervisor Loftus was one, actually picking up glass, <coughs> running a road at Tiller. Um, and, and, and one person, I didn't list his name on the thanks. Um, he was going to try to attend tonight, but he couldn't. Um, has been spending a lot of time, installed that fence by himself, installed a lot of those plantings, um, spreading the mulch. Um, actually, uh, along with my assistance, we painted the non-skid steps uh, last fall, and that's uh, Peter Kant's um, former tr trustee. Yep. So he, he's been spending a lot of time and effort involved with this project, and that's greatly really appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Riem. It's a good way to end a report. But, but, um, all right. We'll now open to general public comment. You know the rules. Three minutes. Introduce yourself. Three minutes. What's on your mind? Going up there, Ben. Don't let us down, Mr. Clark. Okay, legal fees. Yep. There we go. Legal fees on the warrant list um, dated uh, 6 20, 2013, and the amount O'Reilly Ranciello in the amount of $8,587. And um, other legal fees for Mark Shea in the amount of $4,150. Who's Mark Shea? It's the Mayo show. My same same my lawyer routine. Mayo show. Okay. Um, attorney. Mayo attorney. So a suit of lawyers. Yep. Okay. 
Okay, I want to thank Tony Gray and Wayne County Roads for uh, filling in the potholes on Park Lane and East River. Also, I'd like to thank Wayne County for shimming the speed bumps on Allen Road and Woodhaven. There's a, probably about 40 of them, or 30 or 40 of them there, between King and the tracks. So they did that. That was nice of them. Uh, did we make any money in Island Fest? Our meeting is on uh, Wednesday. This Wednesday the 26th? Mm -hmm. Correct. We'll find out then? Okay. Um, Wally told us, uh, Labor, you're saying uh, that the bike path will be finished? I have a bet going. That's uh, for Labor Day? Okay. Uh, some say it'll, it'll happen after, I'm saying. Okay, the buoy at the end of Parkway in the water. How are we going with a ghost guard? I've, I've contacted the, the individual I spoke to said he thought it was going to go in time permitting, but they've, they've kind of reconfigured that area. Remember, there used to be several red cans. Uh, there, was still, there was only one there. Well, for I'm a just, time. if you look at the, south, the former, the southern end of uh, uh, Sugar Island, used to have several cans marking that reef that people usually find with their propellers. Mm -hmm. And there's only, there's only one, one there now, and they haven't put the one in at Parkway, so I'll call them again. That's the one that's important, though. It's, it they, will got prevent surprises there. if people will honor them. Okay. Um, Supreme Court bombshell, no right remained silent. The Supreme Court handed down a decision on June 17th that has been ignored by most media outlets, devastating effect of one of the most fundamental rights protected by the Constitution. A 5-4 ruling, the justice ruled that the person no longer has the right to remain silent as a guarantee by the Fifth Amendment. In Revelant Park, the Fifth Amendment mandates that no one shall be compelled in any criminal case to be witness against himself. Thanks to the Supreme Court, this is in Salinas versus Texas. The part of the Bill of Rights has been excised and has joined the list of so many other fundamental liberties that are now lie in the scrap heap of history. Okay, those things I gave you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Clark. I will do some research on all of these. You do research or am I going to talk? Um, I would I will do research. Okay. I'll see you next meeting then. Well, you, you. you know where I'll be sitting. I know. So. <coughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Other, other uh, general public comment? All right. With none offered, I will entertain a motion for adjournment. So Second. Much. All right. <laughs> 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 so move first. So, <laughs> so move. So move. So I'll, give the, I'll give the motion to <laughs> Clerk Ranka, and uh, I'll give Mr. Malvesto, or Trustee Malvesto, the support. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed and offered. I'll call the meeting adjourned at 8.30. Thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. Have a great summer, a safe 4th of July, and we'll see you here at the end of July.